Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the eighth podcast of Christian Truth Through Apologetics. Um, we're running a little late. Originally, I thought we were planning for eight thirty, but that's cool. Hello, everyone. Oh, and okay. So today we have deflating atheism again. It's like okay. the fourth. Yeah, this is the fourth podcast we've done with him. I won't say podcast, but fourth stream. So, uh, why don't you tell everyone who you are and what you do? Even though most of my followers are probably subscribed to you already. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I am deflating atheism, and I I have a a YouTube channel that takes takes a kind of kind of un- unlike your channel. I take a kind of reactionary stance. Uh, I, I'm always kind of responding to the atheists, and so uh, it's taking atheist arguments. It's taking you know the the these kind of uh in the kind of propaganda we get uh, for atheism, maybe through the mass media or through entertainment or whatever, and kind of tackling that kind of stuff. So it's not properly an apologetics channel like like yours is, although I'll, I get into that, obviously. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, TJ Kurt just did a response, which is quite weird, I, I think, because he has like a million um, subscribers, and, and it's where he... he, he he, my, some of the resp- he usually responds to Vigilant Christian, and of course he responded to the response that Vigilant Christian did to his response yeah. of your video. Yeah. And their response as well, which if he saw that, he would either just shrug it off and act like you weren't, you, you don't know what you're talking about, even though he doesn't know what he's talking about and so on, because he has presuppositions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, is, is bizarrely, even before the Vigilant Christian got involved, uh, for some reason, he picked my video out at random and, and did, a, did a very uh, 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 shabby response to it. And yeah. He just, he just did it in real time and just, just threw out these kind of one-liners. Just, he didn't even know what he was talking about. He was like, okay, he used to like talk about falsifiability and all the stuff that he obviously doesn't really understand. But obviously, his his followers uh, think he's smart because he uses words like that. But he obviously didn't know what he, what he was talking about, and and so uh, I his his was like a twenty minute video. I only took like the first half of it and responded to because I said basically everything I wanted to say. He doesn't come out with any any argument that that's completely devastating after after I stopped responding. Also. Uh, my sister had come down from New York, and I had to get up early the next day, so I was really rushing to 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 get that video out. So, uh, so I, I did not I did not put the effort into it. I I, I probably uh, would have in other circumstances. Uh, I I don't think much effort is needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, but I also want to say it's it's very funny because as you say I mean I I have a, a YouTube channel with uh like thirty five hundred subscribers he has a million subscribers yeah. and so recently he has not been doing atheism a whole lot recently because he's he's basically uh, uh that well is basically dry for him and so uh so he started this re series where he would react to a uh, uh, Christians and so the the first response was to Jordan Peterson and the second response was to me. So I'm I'm a little flattered that I I got tossed into the same bucket as, as Jordan Peterson with I think like five hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah, so far I haven't gotten any response videos, but I don't really care that much. I mean, I encourage responses, obviously, but Yeah, well, well, uh in the, in this stage of your YouTube channel, you're you're go you're going to probably get responses from. <laughs> there are always going to be people you, you don't care for, but well, like when, when I had like 300 subscribers, that's when a, a Bionic Dance found me and those kind of people, and then they send their absolutely noxious followers to to leave these inane drive-by comments in 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 in, in, in your comment section. So uh, uh, steal yourself for that. I would strongly suggest. If Bionic Dance, I would strongly suggest just preemptively blocking uh, Bionic Dance so she can't even see your videos because she will she will tank your channel with downvotes. Her followers will tank your uh, channel with downvotes in any case. So that was like my first order of business in doing my channel is, is blocking the absolute the ones with the absolute toxic fan bases like like Bionic Dance and and and. I still have TMM. TMM can still see my videos, but yeah, there are some others who are just absolutely toxic. 
Well, at least TMM, at least he's he, he's familiar with apologetic. So even though oh. he, he's obnoxious in all his videos, which obviously doesn't affect the truth of arguments, it's just something that irritates me. I, I agree. At least he does try to make arguments, which not all <laughs> not all atheists do, obviously. But he still has a really obnoxious fan base. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I like Cosmic Skeptic because he he's not as um, no, he's definitely, he's definitely in the upper tier of 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 atheists. And, yeah. and I, I don't think his arguments are any good, but but he does it in, in a respectful way, you yeah. know, or and, at least uh, somewhat respectful. Yeah, um, when when he first started, he he would you know um, use these smart out comments and so on, sarcasm, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But he got a lot more profess uh, professional when he started growing his following, which well, is a lot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he is he is held in in, in very high esteem by by YouTube atheists. <laughs> I was like, well, geez, guys, why why you hold like an actual academic in high esteem? You know, you could do that, but. Well, it's it's funny. A not a nineteen year old like him is smarter than most of the new atheists online. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least can present actual arguments and so on. And yeah, that's basic philosophy. Yeah, uh, yeah. And there's the other guy uh, uh, you were talking about. I actually got him mixed up, and, and uh, I I didn't know, but he was another British guy, and so I'm not familiar with him. But I finally pieced it. I finally remembered who uh, who Cosmic Skeptic was, and he he is he is one of the better ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, his videos don't cause me to think too much. I mean, obviously he'll make good points, or he he'll give he'll give the he he doesn't ask who created God and so on. He yeah. he'll. One one thing he'll ask is how could a being be timeless in response to the cosmological argument, which is a decent objection, I think. And William Lane Craig, I think, can give a pretty decent answer to that. But moving on, well, it's also funny with the TJ Kurt re Kurt response, and I, I I like it how you in your uh, response you point out his contradiction of how how he says you can't disprove a negative, and then he literally says things that are real can be falsified. <laughs> I actually did not uh uh no uh, what he said was things that are real can be disproven. I did not even feel that I did not even feel that uh warranted a response. I just played it over and over <laughs> because because he that was kind of corollary to his comment about about falsifiability and it just shows how severely he misapprehends what he's talking about. Yeah, it's and then, um, oh yeah, I, I also like, well, when, when you start, when your whole series starts with, um, re videos or reaction videos, you're probably running out of content. Yeah, Very... I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah, there's as, nothing. as I said, I mean, my, my, my channel is reactionary. I'm always in response to it. And, and the, the reason for that is because. Like if I want to put forward something like, you know, the contingency argument, or the fine-tuning argument or whatever. There are a lot of people who are a lot smarter than me and a lot more high-profile than me who have already done that. You know, so I, I feel like my contributions in that regard would, would be kind of superfluous because you already have you, you already have William Lane Craig and you already have Frank Turek out there on the public stage, I think, doing, doing, doing an excellent job. Now, when YouTube atheists make really dumb responses... And of course, their followers say, "Oh, it's been debunked. It's been debunked because their their atheist guru tells them it's been debunked." Uh, that's kind of where I think we need a little kind of muscle in in doing that. Yeah, um, I I love seeing William Lane Craig response videos. Yeah, it, if you're going to critique a professor, you should at least not straw man the argument like um rationality rules. Uh, accuses the argument of Klom being committing the fallacy of equivocation on universe. Of course, M William Lane Craig specifically states that universe means all time, time space, and matter, and it doesn't change in the premises and so on. Yeah, but it, it, it's just simple, simple things like that. Like he did a um, an hour long presentation. No, did William Lane Craig actually respond to uh, rationality rules. No, no, he, okay. he has no clue who he is. He has responded to YouTubers before. Yeah, he. Uh, like I was just describing, he yeah. did do a presentation. Uh, he presented at Biola University, 
and he did top 10 worst objections to the yeah. claw, man. They're all atheist objections, like um, the claw is circular, or nothing really begins to exist. Yeah, matter. And then, of course, you have the, like you point out in our first chat, you have all things, things do come out of nothing, you know, quantum vacuums and so on. Yeah. Just like you can't have it either way. Yeah, well, no, they, they have two objections that are in contradiction to each other. So they yeah. say, they say uh, nothing nothing is ever really created. It's all made out of previous stuff. Yeah. And the, other, the other objection is uh, things come from nothing all the time because of, of uh, virtual particles. Now, both of these objections taken on their own are wrong. Yeah. Uh, but the, the more important point is that they're in contradiction to each other. So it's like atheists can't even make up their own minds <laughs> how the Kalam is wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it, yeah, just, oh yeah. And then you learn about Aristotle's four ways for, uh, cause four types of causes and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when you say, when you say, uh, everything, when the atheists object that, uh, everything is made out of previous stuff, that would only be like one kind of cause that would only be the material cause in, in kind of the Aristotelian view. Yeah. And then you would have the sufficient cause. I think the formal cause, yeah. I don't know the other one on top of my head, the formal cause would be what it comes down to be. But, um, and he, he did respond to that in his, Hour long presentation. He basically debunked all these online laymen. He calls them infidel uh, online YouTubers and so on. Yeah. But he, he responds by saying, Has the, um, the Empire State Building always existed? And so on. Yeah. Clearly, it becomes a new thing. It comes into being with new characteristics and so on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can make the lame kind of trivial objection that, yeah, the steel already existed and the concrete already existed. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and then you, you point to the fact that matter began to exist at a finite point, too. And then they're trying to bring out the quantum vacuum, but it's just like you just said that things don't really begin to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even things in the cosmos. I mean, you can point to like black holes or, or increasing entropy or something, and say this is this is stuff that is that is being created, and yeah. not previous stuff. Yeah, yeah. You, you. I'm pretty sure you saw my uh, dealing with the top ten objections to the Kalam, and I some were you know more intelligent objections, and some were just stupid, like who created God. Yeah, yeah. Well, w what I find uh, particularly perplexing. Is that is that? <laughs> it, it, it's like, yeah. You you could say, well, this this, uh, you know, no 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 uh, uh, apologetic argument really ends with, you know, therefore uh, uh, God created it. And, you know, even even the uh, even Aquinas's five ways uh, end with ends with like this is what all men know as God. Although it's a it's kind of a cluster of of certain attributes that we would expect of God. So yeah. uh, what I find very odd is when, when atheists say, well, that still doesn't give us a reason to believe in a God for which there is no evidence of. I was like, I just, I just gave you the evidence. Well, have, you, have you ever noticed that, that they just move in a very tight circle and they circle back to their original premise that there is no evidence for God? It's yeah. like they won't believe in the evidence unless there is already evidence. Well, I, I think the biggest problem is a misunderstanding of what logic is, and we've had this conversation. Yes. If you present a deductive syllogism where you have the first premise, um, everything that begins to exist has a cause, the universe began to exist, and then a the conclusion, therefore the universe had a cause, they will argue, oh, that's not evidence, and then you realize, no, these are statements that can, if they're true, then it's literally impossible for the conclusion to be false. Yeah. And exactly. I, I think it's something that they fail to misunderstand, like uh, Lawrence Krauss and Thunderfoot and so on. And, and a deductive argument is the strongest kind of evidence you can have because yeah. it proves something is necessarily the case, given the premises. Yeah. So it's, it's absurd when when they say uh, 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 arguments aren't evidence. And yeah. like, like I said... That's an argument, by the way. No, that's, that's a statement. That's just a bald evidence-free statement, and that, that gets into a well, whole, it's a premise to a whole other topic. We can get into when they say like you you know you can't prove a negative. Well, that's that's a negative statement. So by by your own standard, you just made an unprovable claim, <laughs> and you you claim to have an evidence-based worldview, 
and yet you're basing it on on a claim that is by its own standard unprovable. I yeah, it, it, it would seem like atheism too is a um a negative. Well, of course they're going to the whole lack of belief thing. It's not really a position. It, 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 it's all incoherent. Yeah. 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 Uh, at least a new atheism. Um, I, I there's an intelligent YouTuber who comments on my videos, and you I, know, I know, I know you're talking. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he he's intelligent. I give him that. He he's above my head. I think. But you will uh, notice. You will notice that whenever he gives you citations, I have to. I have to be quite honest. I I have like so many books I need to read, and so uh, uh, I I don't I don't get into the, into all the all the atheist apologetics. Uh, I I. Who knows? Maybe uh, atheists have a great argument sitting on a very high shelf. What I do know is that high shelf is far beyond the reach of your of your typical YouTube atheist. But you will notice that guy, uh, the MCP 2012 or whatever his name is. Yeah, it's like Jake up with these weird symbols around it. But it, oh, okay, we're talking about different people. Yeah, well, he. I'm pretty sure he probably has some sort of degree in philosophy because for how much he knows about it. Unless he studies it all day, which I won't be surprised. He he, he literally leaves essays. And it's just like yeah. Can can oh. you can you please get your main point out so I can respond to it? So I don't have to. Well, the 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 guy I'm talking, the MCP guy, uh, uh, he has uh, all these parenthetical comments, and he has the parenthetical comments within the parenthetical comments, and I'm like, my eyes just then, boggle trying trying to read what he writes, but. Yeah. Uh, it's like I, I don't. It's like if if it's a YouTube comment, I'm not going to invest that much energy into reading it or responding to it. So literally, like if if an atheist, I'm sure if I'm sure this drives them crazy, and if so, I'm very happy for that. <laughs> but like if an atheist leaves a novel, I'll read like the first two sentences and the last sentence and respond to that and ignore the rest. <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed to say, but uh, this guy uh, I was referring to. He refers to uh, uh, atheist philosophers like you know Michael Martin and, and yeah. Mackey and all those guys. You will notice uh, they're all from the seventies. He's like he doesn't reference anything that's more recent than the seventies. So I guess that was that was the high point of 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 kind of you know uh, atheist philosophy, and that's I think when when William Lane Craig talks about kind of the resurgence. Of, of, of theology of, of Christian you know philosophy uh, that's what he's talking about it taking o taking over in the 70s and then going into the 80s but yeah whenever whenever a an atheist tries to make a very uh, a serious reference to a serious atheist philosopher it's it never seems to be any more recent than the 1970s well I I don't find anything wrong with appealing to something I it would seem like I, I don't think, no, you're I, making I, this think claim. Telling. I think it's telling that 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 it's like, no, it's like any any, any of the crop of new atheists in the last 15 years, they are not. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. I thought you were saying because it was from the 70s, therefore, it's probably not as credible. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be the genetic fallacy. But I don't think you're making that, obviously, because no. you know what foul you, you know what fallacies actually are and so on. But um, unlike some people. But um, he he'll he'll leave these. I, I try and read his comments, and he he appeals to Hume a lot. And I was not too familiar. Uh, I'm a lot more familiar, I think, with Hume now. So yeah. Next time he leaves, uh, well, next time he leaves a huge paragraph, he may do it on this video. I'm gonna ask him, can you please sum up your entire your your entire <laughs> argument in like three sentences so I can respond. You you know what uh, uh, I think a good a good objection to, I've done this a few times is like if you're going to give me that much to respond to make a video of your own so I can have another video on my channel because I'm not going to put all this work into crafting a response in the comments that's just it's just going to get washed away like 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 you know uh, uh, names uh, written on the beach you know when the tide comes in yeah you know make a video of your own. So I can take that and do a response video, and so I can have an extra video on my channel. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a good point too. But yeah, he and he actually on my top ten Christian apologist video, he actually left his top ten favorites of Christian apologists, and it's just like, oh, I respect that since you're actually familiar with. Yeah, and he named some that I'm not actually familiar with, so it's just like, oh, so you're actually familiar with apologetics, so good, we can have good conversations since you won't straw man. 
the entire time, but he he doesn't. So yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm going to get a little water, so I'll be back. I can hear you. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. And on back and back on that point, I would also argue that when someone leaves these long comments, uh, I will just refer to my similar um, point that you should ask them, what do you mean by that? How did you come to that conclusion? And will this change your mind? And so on. I think those three questions are sufficient to deal with people who are above your head, or at least in their terminology. Now, I'm, I'm not accusing of hiding behind big words, even though I'm familiar with a lot of philosophical terms. But I'll, I'll just simply point that out. And that's Greg Kokel's book, uh, Tactics. And that's that's the Colombo tactic. And that's one that's one chapter in the book. I I have not read the book yet, but I'm fam- familiar with it from uh, reading a lot of Stan Teresa as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jeez, that was fast. <laughs> no, I was just, just getting some extra water, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um... So let's talk about the non sequitur show. When when they start, like a few months ago, I I I don't really know. I don't really know. I've never actually I've never actually watched one of those videos. I, I mean, to be honest, like watching watching a ninety minute podcast is is a big investment to ask of people. You know, I I have plenty of time. So yeah. Um, besides with my college work and stuff, I. We actually, in my one class, we went through um, how much time you actually have in a week. And if you work a 40 hour week and you're a college student or a 40 hour day job, sleeping is like 50 hours. And then, uh, you know, the day job would be 40 hours. And then uh, everything else you have to do would be 10 hours. It's like you have 58 hours left to do. It and you realize, oh, I actually I actually do have time. I just waste it. Yeah, yeah. I am I am I am terrible with with budgeting time and I'm terrible with budgeting money and that's that's another way that time is money because people people who are bad with one are usually bad with the other and I'm certainly guilty of that. Sounds like my brother. <laughs> yes, but you know I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like I'm kind of like a squirrel you know my mind is going in all directions so you know it's it, it comes with the territory. Do squirrels have minds? <laughs> I don't know. Do you have a mind? Something I couldn't prove. Yeah, I know. It's, a, it's an assumption. You, <laughs> you literally could not open up your brain and find your mind, which is actually, I think, an argument for identity that the mind, if, if you assume that the mind is its own thing, then that's something you would expect to find that it's independent of um the brain and so on. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, yeah, I, I mean, and that's... I mean, you know, materialists will make the argument that yeah, we can we can uh, uh, you know correlate uh, uh, brain states with with emotions and whatnot, but they they seem to miss the case that we only can do that correlation because the person whose brain is being examined tells us what they are feeling. Yeah, so and, and, and it could- through their subjectivity, you know, we can only make that correlation through their subjectivity. Yeah, correlation does not mean causation, and it it could just be that I am using my brain since I I am a a, a soul. I think that is contingent upon uh, but a body. I think, and this is something that some philosophers of the soul might disagree with me on. Yeah. I, I think the body shows our contingency, and so on. That's sort of a reformed view of God's sovereignty, but um, and sort of not not so much against Cartesian um like Descartes and so on, but yeah. I, I think we do have a soul that is its own thing, mind, will, emotions, and the self as a whole. But um, I, I, I do think that on substance dualism, you would expect to find this sort of correlation that, hmm, the mind can affect the brain and the brain can yeah. affect a mental states. And people will point to Phineas, Phineas Gage. Oh, he, he got a pull in his head. He was com- he's a completely different person now. Well, I would be mad if I got a pull through my head too, but <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there is. You will notice that that when uh, the brain is altered like that, and there's a change in behavior, it's it, it always seems to be a, a change in the inhibitory functions of of the of the mind. You will know, like we all have uh, aggressive thoughts. We we all have thoughts 
that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna act in this aggressive way. I'm gonna be mean to this person. The thing is, we don't act on those thoughts. That that is our, our inhibitory system. And so, what to my this is of course me speaking as a complete non-expert here. But uh, when when people have these traumatic brain injuries, and and I, I've dealt with a person like this, I could describe my 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 experiences uh, when we get to that. But it, it always it always seems to deal with the with the inhibitory part with the inhibitory functions of the mind rather than the executive functions of the mind. It, it, it that never really affects the eye. We never feel that we are we are compelled to act in a certain way uh, from something outside of ourselves. It, it's always it's always we don't have that wherewithal to control our own impulses, and so that that's what I think is with Phineas Gage because yes, he he got very angry. And he, he, you know, was prone to rages. Oh, we we all feel angry. We all feel rage. The thing is, we just don't act on it. Well, you also re- realize that feelings are in our mental states. It seems like you can't just find my feelings in my brain. Uh, of course, dopamine will affect your feelings. Of course, yeah. And that, that's well, well, dualism admits that as well. I think. Th- I, I mean, that's uh, that's something you said before. I think it's very important. Not not even as Christian apologists, just just as people who 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 who, who uh, object to bad science and bad philosophy, and just things that are dumb in the popular culture. When when you see a cutesy little uh, Facebook meme that says you know you know dopamine is happiness or something, yeah. or you see somebody say you know love is just a chemical reaction in the brain, uh, you need to tell them they are objectively wrong. Yeah. You are objectively wrong. What you're saying is objectively false. Now, maybe we can correlate these certain brain states to love or emotions or whatnot, but that is at most a correlation. That's the best we can do. Again, you can just say that this is how I react to this chemical that's going through my head right now since I can feel it in my mental states. Now, if you ask me... Well, no, no, it's, it's not. It's not even necessarily that. I mean, I mean, the 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 chemical flooding into the brain can be a, a reaction to the emotion, which I think yeah. like adrenaline. When when you have uh, you know an experience and the adrenaline floods in, it, it's already it's in response to a to a stimulus that's already there. Yeah, and um, IP has the neuroplasticity test and so on. Ken Crocoduck, I think, sort of failed to address that. He he tried attacking on the mechanisms of how the soul war would interact with the body. I I'm, I'm pretty sure now I, 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 I don't see how the interaction problem is a, is a, is a problem at all. In well, my- I think, I think it's a category error because you're, you're asking some, something that is non-physical, how it physically reacts. Yeah. Well, they, they, they're saying, well, there has to be a, 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 an infinite regress because the physical yeah. thing still has to interact with, uh, <laughs> you know, the, 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 a non-physical has to interact with a physical before it can interact with the physical. It's like, yeah. no, that's why are you making that assumption? You're just defeating the entire the entire premise with with you know that assumption. Yeah, and um, what was I going to say? I did not. I, I did. I butchered that. I completely butchered that. I realized, but I, I hope you understand what I was trying to say. Yeah. Wait. What was I talking about? The interaction problem in IP and and and. and oh yeah, yeah. I, IP is a big idealist. And I, I now I'll, I'll probably end up straw manning this because I'm not. I've studied idealism and, and well, no, it's not, it's not straw manning if you do your best to represent the position. It's when it's when you lie about it. That, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, well, you could accidentally straw man, I guess. I guess, but if if IP is saying that the the, the physical reality outside my mind disappears whenever I'm not thinking or closing my head, then I, I completely disagree with that. Well, I, I don't think that's his position. No, I, I well, again, I, I, I have not gotten that deep into this discussion. But, but the thing about idealism is, or at least Christian idealism, is that not that it's solipsism. It's that, it's that God is the primordial mind. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. The mind of God, yes. As, as finite beings, I think we are dependent on the physical reality. I think. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, you can believe that you know, uh, ex- you know, reality ceases to be real when you're not thinking about it, but that's that's just a non-starter. I mean, I mean. Yeah, I, I also think King Crocodile's um response is a category error. I already said that actually. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's it's just, it's just the absurdity that that materialism is, is a concept that is formed in our minds, and yet we believe that we are our actions are determined by this construct. Our, our thoughts are determined by the construct that is formed in our minds. It, it, it's a very bizarre way of looking at the world. Yeah, and um, and some atheists are not materialist because they believe mental states are their own thing, but they hold to property dualism. Do you know what that is? Uh, no, I actually don't. But yeah, that that would be like a naturalist as opposed to as opposed to a materialist. Yeah, I guess. But um, basically, property dualism would hold that we we are a physical thing essentially, but we have mental properties. But our mental properties arise from brain states. Yeah, it's emergent. Yeah. It's emergent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Process. But that 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 just seems to beg the question of how how are these their own thing? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree. You, you. You're you're still trying to reduce it to re, uh, material uh, materialistic reductionistic view. You're, it just is very question begging. I find it to be. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, Shannon Q, uh, I'm pretty sure would hold to that view. Yeah, well, I mean, what we just talked about, I mean, what I just talked about, about the, the correlation of, of, of mental states with, with uh, uh, you know, neurophysiology, I heard her talk about something like that. And so I think from what I've heard uh, uh, her say about it, she's just way off base. Well, she she does have a degree in it, I think, which... I, I, no, I, I, there's nothing yeah, preventing yeah. a person from uh, who has, who knows a whole lot about, uh, you know, neurophysiology for making a very uh bad philosophical assumptions you know yeah um why well, this is sort of my own bias perspective on psychology uh, a lot of it i think has bad philosophical presuppositions because well, when i had psychology i didn't know what a non sequitur was but when, when i was going through some of the stuff in it at least the stuff that seemed very materialistic mm. like um the, the the very first day we were taught that there is no such thing as a soul or or at least it's unreasonable to believe and and this was sort of not in a non not not so much in a secular school as well i mean it, it, public high school but and just the arguments for so irresponsible like, that's so irresponsible yeah 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 but it, no i i was yeah, continue i'm pretty sure i don't i don't have the quote on me and the guy but i'm pretty sure psychologist who won a nobel peace prize had does believe in the soul and so on. So I, I, I think there are heart psychologists who obviously believe in the soul. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they realize that mental states actually do exist and are not just emergent and so on. Cause if they're just emergent, then it, and this is what they would hold to that. If you just poke my brain, I'll, I'll feel love instantly and so on. And you can yeah. like that. Now there are cases where, um, you, you, the brain will get damaged and it's harder to perform tasks and that and that will get into split brain patients and so on. But I, I just simply use the analogy of if I am a person, a, a soul who essentially does have mind, will, and emotions that cannot be um, mentally or physically reduced, then um, certain functions of the brain, like if I'm not able to sleep because part of my brain is damaged, then yeah, that's a function of the body. Yeah. I would use the analogy of Let's say a uh, musician playing an instrument. If you have a bad musician, obviously you won't be able to play the instrument as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or, or you can think of it as being like tools at your disposal. I mean, yeah. I mean. And um, logic. Obviously, I, I I do find the tag arguments for the transcendental laws of logic and so on. I think there are mental concepts, but I I think the brain does help you think. Obviously, because if you got if you got rid of mine, then obviously I won't be able to think. Yeah. Whether I'm in an unembodied state, I I do find unembodied states um impressive because um there there are some cases where the the person is brain dead basically, and what mo whenever I whenever people present these cases instantly they go well that's impossible so it can't happen so therefore I'm not willing to listen to whether it's a reliable source or not yeah and well there 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 are obviously some faked sources um. The the heaven is for real book. I I don't know if that was um true or not. So some say that the kid admitted to it and so on, but I, I'm not too familiar with that. But that's just near death experiences. I'm talking about people who are dead and yeah. they have done embodied states and morgues and so on and brain dead. And then then there's the people who saw things like the famous case of of the woman who saw the shoes on top of the uh, on yeah. top of the uh, hospital. Yeah. 
and and then oh. the old, old man who um who felt and he was <laughs> on body state and they see the they see dead relatives and so on, and their brain is not active. Well, I don't know how a brain they don't even know is dead, so who they don't even know yeah. are dead sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And this woman put his dentures in his drawer, and he saw that in his own body saying when he when he awoke, uh, awoke, he was just like, Can I have my dentures back. Yeah, and there are people who are blind who have a uh, near death experience. There's a there's a blind oh. called blind sight about just that. Yeah. And they know, it's, it's so ridiculous when they do. There is no evidence that there is life after death. Okay, so please go individually for each one of these tens of thousands of cases and, and, and debunk every one of them. Otherwise, you have no basis for saying that there is no evidence for life after death. You, you have to at least admit the possibility of these intermediate states, I think. Yeah, unless unless you have some a priori uh, prejudice. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm sure they're trying, you know find some sort of naturalistic explanation well actually you can have these experiences outside your body your brain just somehow does that and so on well yeah i i mean that becomes naturalism of the gaps though i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They, like they made a discovery that yeah after after you die there is residual uh electricity in the brain <laughs> and then like the atheists throw up their hands and say that explains all near-death experiences yeah. it's like actually it doesn't you're just <laughs> That is, you're literally making a naturalism of the gaps that just because there is brain electricity, that therefore this explains away uh, everything, all, all evidence for a, a you know death experience. They're not near death experience; they're death experiences. Yeah. Uh, and without even examining the contents of the experiences themselves. Yeah, definitely ridiculous. Yeah. And then, of course, oh, man, I keep having these good thoughts, and then, then they disappear. <laughs> Ex nihilo, but um, yeah, they they disappear into nothingness. Well, that that would be n n nihilo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. n nihilo. <laughs> I I I don't know my Latin that well. Yes. Well, would that? I, I'm I don't know if that's a Latin term or or Hebrew phrase because the Hebrews I'm I'm pretty sure did believe in um in English we don't really use Hebrew in in. in yeah. Wish. Well, I mean, if you want to study the Bible, like yeah. you go towards a degree like mine, um, I'm probably not going to take too many classes on Hebrew and so on because I think the ESV is a reliable enough source because it's it, it's translated by the experts by um the earliest manuscripts we have, and I just learned from my last podcast that there's an entire book of John in the second century, and if you think um John was written AD ninety, that's literally within a hundred years. Yeah, I mean, it may not be the original, but it's still a copy. The clip, yeah, well, no, I mean there was there was a very recent discovery of 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 a uh, uh, new New Testament text from the first century. I mean, very recently, and the thing is, we're discovering stuff all the time. We're constantly making archaeological discoveries, so it's not unreasonable to assume that within the coming decades, we may have a whole lot of New Testament, uh, uh, you know, uh, text from from the first century. Yeah, I was listening to a podcast on cross exam that's Frank's Turk podcast. But yeah. um, he he was talking to an archaeologist, and they're only allowed to explore like thirty one percent of Israel. And as we as they explore this, they, it keeps verifying the Bible. And if we were able to explore all the events that take place in the Bible and their locations, and that I, I I think it would be a fine assumption. Uh, an argument from prediction, I guess, but it would probably be safe to assume that it, you're you're probably going to find more archaeological finds if we were yeah. allowed to discover the, these. The, the people and the places and the cities are are just all it yeah. are, are get, seem to it seems to be like a weekly thing that that we find some some evidence of some you know figure of the Bible or or some uh, Old Testament city. So, yeah, I, I find the it's more, and more ridiculous when an atheist says that the book, you know, the Bible is a book of fairy tales. It's it's just well, such lazy ignorance, you know. I I, I think it's willful, willful, willful yeah, ignorance. ignorance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm reading the case for the resurrection by Gary Habermas and uh, yes, Jonah, and it's a great book, and I'm um, I'm going through it. I, I I went through the minimal facts and mo most of the counter arguments, but I'm in the chapter of scientific naturalism. Which is typically the biggest objection by the natural naturalists. Um, they use Hume's argument against miracles. I plan on doing a paper for that on a final in one of my classes. 
Okay. Given my refutation of Eames' main arg- argument, it basically goes um, through our experiences. You know, he didn't believe that experiences can make a logical connection between cause and effect, but through experiences, we tend to tell that things don't happen like in miracles, like violate. He now he defines it as just violation as natural law was a lot more than that. Yeah. And then, um, since we see this, a wise man ought not to believe in miracles, which of course neg- negates that. That's a presupposition that if 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 the disciples truly did see what they saw, if the historical evidence points towards that, then that's not. It was their experiences. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, C- yeah. C- C.S. Lewis was not a philosopher, but he tackled uh, the human yeah. argument beautifully. Yeah, and then you also have um, Craig Keener's two two volume set yeah, on his miracles yes. experiences, and then Lee Strobel came out with his more recent, most recent book, uh, "Case for Miracles." Yeah, and some of these mir- miracles, of course, you have the spontaneous uh, remission, which is just being the question, just renaming what we call miracle and so on. So yeah, yeah, and that, it commits naturalism of the apps as well, like we talked about. Well, I, I mean, I mean, there's a very easy response when, when an atheist when an atheist says, uh, uh, "Why hasn't gone? Why why hasn't God? Uh, 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 you know, what what's what's the phrase they always use? Why can't well, God? It, 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 God it, why can't God heal amputees? Oh yeah, that's you. That just says I I can't say that he yeah. has. <laughs> just say I, I don't know that he has it. Give me proof that there has been no healed amputees in the human history. Well, see, that's the thing. If you were to give them a case, then they would attack your sources and so on, and yeah. their their biases would. Now, I don't know if there's a case in um either of these books that I mentioned before, but also it it, it seems like to me that. Why? Why should God have to anyway? If He's done other miracles, which yeah. is, which are described as miracles, it cannot be naturalist uh, naturalistically explained. I'm not doing God for gaps here. I'm just simply saying. Well, because atheists just keep moving the goalposts. So if, yeah. if you give one piece, then they'll move the goalpost over here. So they're going. Well, this doesn't satisfy my demands. So, yeah. well, sorry, the sovereign God doesn't yeah. give up your petty <laughs> wants and so on. And I, I think it's reasonable to ask for miracles in some cases, but I mean, some some people, no ma- no matter what you present them, and this is where, of course, I don't believe in the five point Calvinist predestination and so on. But well, extreme, technically, the five points of Calvin have nothing to do with uh, predestination, but the hyper predestination is sometimes what I believe because it seems like you would have to pre be predestined to be wired like this to not be willing to accept any, any evidence and so on like a, that that's a problem for me because oh, I, no. I i that that, that that that's a joke but yeah i know i i mean it really is a, a serious problem because there there are some some people who are so blinkered by pride you would think it would have to take a, a, an act of divine mercy to to get them to see beyond their pride well, th- this is what even, um, even their own choice, even their own willful choice, c- couldn't even get past their own pride. You know, it seems like God would have to take them there. Yeah, and the Calvinist would argue that he either predestined them to be like that, or that he just hasn't regenerated them, and given him his grace. And that's I, I'm doing apologetics here. If if um, in First Peter, I'm commanded to give defense, and I hope in the hope that I have within me with gentleness and respect, it seems like I should, that that seems to presuppose free will and that people are able to accept this and repentance is a change of mind and so on. Well, yeah. yes. I, I mean, you, you cannot, you know, be expected necessarily to convince anyone. You just have to give your best argument because it's very possible. People, people will never be convinced. Oh yeah. I, I, I don't think that's, now, I do, obviously, as a Christian, we, we all believe that we have sinful natures, but I, I don't think that affects every decision that we make. I, I think one can make an intellectual case if they're willing to seek and so on, and there's many verses to back that up, I think. Um, as uh, well. I, think I think what is what is uh, particularly poisonous about, about new atheism is that it gets, it gets kids who are very young at an age— where they're they're really looking for their identity and they're really looking for validation, and uh, it, it it gives them everything they want. It says, okay, all you, all you have to do is is subscribe to to these little uh, uh you know these little talking Memes. points. Yeah. You have to you have to recite these little talking points, and you will be in this company of people who continually reassure you that you are you are the rational 
you know, reasonable scientific, uh, scientifically minded uh, uh, Superman, basically. And and you can you have license to to laugh at the most cherished beliefs of other people. I mean, that is for a, for a, a fourteen or fifteen year old. That that is a very seductive offer. And so what happens is that for these young people, uh, their entire identity gets based on their atheism. Their entire self-esteem is based on their atheism. Without the atheism, they, they no longer have that ability to, to, to laugh at all the people who they're superior to. You know, And so uh, uh, that is what makes it so insidious. Is because it's not just. I mean, they always say, "Oh, all, all I need is one piece of evidence, and that will convince." No, I really don't think that's the case. I really think that you will resist because uh, you will resist uh, with just with white knuckles because your entire your entire identity and your entire self esteem is based on your atheism. And if that's pulled out from under you, you you really wouldn't even know what to do. Yeah, and I I think that's most case. I don't think it's necessarily well obviously it is sin the sin of pride yeah well i, yeah. I think particularly well, now, I, I think that is of your own free will particularly in in the in the 2010s i think pride has has taken on a new ferocity in in, in kind of uh, getting people into atheism yeah it, it comes down to can you choose your own beliefs i think you can yeah. i think that's why you have a, a vast uh why of beliefs and so on and why people can um now a, a very irrational belief i think one can hold to is mormonism at least concerning if you believe in the historical claims of the book of mormon and joseph smith and so on yeah and I, I think that's just been shown to be false and i i think that's why you can choose your beliefs because if it's just based on a brain reacting to information and so on then obviously Obviously, you, you're just a material brain, and you don't choose anything. In yeah. the first, but if your mental states are your own thing, then you can interpret that. Uh, you can either be rational about it or irrational. I, I I do believe in libertarian free will, and I think I I am a moralist. But that 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 that's a whole different other conversation. But then the then the uh, uh, materialists uh, somehow feel that they have some ability to to mock other people. <laughs> Even though, rational, even though, according to their own uh, ideology, they have no choice in the matter. I mean, yeah, and then then they're just say, "Well, I don't have a choice in Maki Bush." It's like, "Oh, so you're not really superior to me anyway?" Yeah, yeah. and I mean, that's I mean, I made this point many times before. The thing about materialism is that it eviscerates, it cannibalizes every every virtue uh, uh, atheists would like to apply to themselves. All, all their intelligence, all their rationality, all their courageousness. I, I'm, I'm the courageous person who dares to cast off the shackles of my indoctrination and think for myself. No, you didn't. By, by your own worldview, you didn't do any of that. You're not courageous. You're not intelligent. You're not rational. You're not scientifically minded. You're, 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 you know, it's like, it's like, you know, I don't know, soup in a bowl or something. You know, how, how can soup in a bowl be, be rational? I mean. Uh, how, how can a thunderstorm be rational? No, these are, these are just physical processes playing out by your own uh, worldview. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that, that that explains moral landscape. And you know, if we if we assume that it's a good thing that um, the the human flourishing is a good thing, then then we can explain everything by science. Yeah. But of course, Sam Harris is a materialist, essentially. Well, I don't know. He's probably a property dualist, but he does not believe in any form of libertarian free will. She's like, why should I accept that premise? Yeah. Well, it, I, I mean, I, I mean, there, there are so many holes you could poke it. I was, I was watching yeah. a, a video, an old video by uh, Christopher Missing the Mark. And I mean, I, I already know the problems with, with doing kind of a hedonic calculus and using that just kind of by by dint of assertion as as the basis for uh for a, a morality but uh but you, christopher was say, uh, saying all these other things it's like okay well what what time frame do creatures have to flourish what if what well, if there's, wait, 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 what okay. if there's an explosion in population and then they be, become entirely extinct within two months would that be creaturely flourishing I mean, well, how are you going to calculate this? You know, well, it it, it commits the uh, is fallacy, but it, it's a it's a presupposition that you should um, that human human flourishing is a good thing. But it's just like you're you're just begging the question: Why is it a good thing? 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Even taken on its own terms, uh, uh, it, it's it doesn't really give us many answers. Even if you accept the terms of their own argument, it's like, okay, how do you how do you find the area under the curve here? It's like, okay, well, if 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 we live for uh, uh, if we live for uh, 30, 30, 30, you know, who knows, 30 eons or something, but we're suffering and pain the whole time, would that be flourishing? It's like, how, how do you calculate these things? Well, they, they would just say that's a bad thing, but at the same time, it's just like, why should humans be the only thing to flourish? Why not other animals? Why yeah. not baboons be able to flourish over animals? And th does that not commit speciesism or you're speciesist against other species and so so on? Yes, what what if what if uh, 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 sacrificing yourself? What if what if having a, a a group of baboons throw you off a cliff would would give a whole would give a whole group of uh, baboons Im Im immense pleasure, more pleasure than you would ever suffer uh, being thrown off a cliff? Uh, well, would that be hey, flourishing. I mean, yeah. Especially on the neo Darwinian view, when they are our cousins. Of course, you believe in evolution, which is fine. Well. Yeah. Very broad term. Um, would you hold to I, IP struc uh, structuralism and so on? Or I, I, I cannot make an educated. I cannot make an educated uh, uh, comment about that. Like I said, it's one of those things where I have to say, I, I, I'm just, I'm just a, a dilettante here. I mean, I mean, I, I do the best I can with my limited understanding. I think what happened is that uh, my my opinion, and you, a, atheists can just you know, sling arrows at me for even, even conjecturing there, there, there was some sort of blueprint when life was created and, and all the life we see are, are variations from this blueprint. It, it's like certain traits and certain traits. That's why we see, uh, uh, you know, certain, certain species that are way across the, the whole uh, animal family tree, uh, having these similar traits. It's like, well, I, why, why, why can't be a common designer? Yeah. Well, no, that's that's why that's why I'm saying. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there, yeah. There was a designer for this blueprint, and and all the all these kind of uh, uh, expressions of DNA that we see are are, are just various uh, uh ex, you know various expressions of certain parts of this overall blueprint. Well, I I agree with you, but why couldn't why couldn't that just be intelligent design? Now, if you want to say that's how it was done, IP would say that the fine tuning of the universe would ultimately make this um his, his structuralism i believe is the fine tuning has set the world in motion where it's an inevitable where beings like us would come out to exist and so on so it's not random it's not random mutation and so on it's planned mutation i guess and so on and okay. yeah so it's basically divinely um planned for us to be here through the process of natural selection and so on which yeah, is something I mean that, even if you hold, even if you hold to the principle of random mutation, I, th I think the I, I, that's that's where I really that is really the Achilles heel of Darwinism, as, as far as I'm concerned, is the is the whole concept of random mutation, and that a random mutation would would result in a, in a beneficial adaptation, and the creature would also get the associated set of behaviors uh, in order to make good on that adaptation. I mean that, that's that's something that, that no one ever seems to talk about. It's okay, well, you know, we we go we go from being a, a, an egg laying species, <laughs> and then who knows, maybe a, a photon hits a protein and it mutates, and then suddenly uh, they give live birth. Okay, well, it's not just a matter of giving live birth; it's also having a set of behaviors associated with yeah. being mothers and fathers. So that would have to happen at the same time, and and so it it, it just it it just uh. uh I don't know. It just all seems vastly. It just seems ridiculous to me. But if you want to, you can say that yes, uh, uh, God is. Since we we live, uh, I mean, just all all these quantum processes, uh, it would be trivial for God to just shoot off electrons or whatever and, and create mutations or whatever. So that's not really even a problem, as far as I see. Well, yeah, and it, it, evolution itself. Well. The naturalistic evolution would assume we're just material, so I have no problem of that's how our bodies came to be because God did take dust from the ground and said, yeah. "Um, that that's a abiogenesis." So, well, technically, it's not because I believe God put the soul in, and that's the life of us, which is the breath of God. Uh, I think God can make souls and so on. Well, I don't. Life is notoriously difficult to define, you know. 
from a biological standpoint, yeah. from a philosophical standpoint, theological, I, I think we're made in the image of God and we have the breath yes. of God. But bi biologically, it's probably not as well defined. And I would hold to Michael Behe's um, intelligent designs in the ro in the mechanisms of bacteria and so so on the flamella ro rotor. I, I agree entirely. Yeah. And then, you know, the atheists would object to say, "Oh, okay, what what is the what is the mechanism that produced uh, this thing?" It's like I don't really need to answer that question. All I have to say is, if it looks like if it has the appearance of design, it is a, it is a rational inference to say it has been designed. Yes, pur purpose is uh, an indication of design. Um, J. Warner Wallace, he in his third chapter, I think he he tackles um this the, the Michael B. He's things with um the intelligent design. Uh, I I read this a little while ago, like probably eight months ago or something like that. But in God's Crime Scene, great book. I'm only halfway through, but basically he he gives out eight cases of how you can tell design, and he matches those eight. Uh, design things to the bacteria and so on shows how this would be somewhat it, it would be reasonable to him for a design yeah yeah and he, he kind of relates that all back to his own forensic work yeah 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 w which is why i love his books because yeah it sounds really interesting it sounds really interesting I, I think he did his um book series in like reverse order it would seem like he would start with forensic faith which says Christians should give a defense, basically practice apologetics, and should do apologetics, and then get to God's crime scene. It, 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 well, it's, kind of like Lee, it's kind of like Lee Strobel, you know. He kind yeah, of started yeah. with the case for Christ and kind of worked out outwards from there, you know. Yeah, but he he takes the evidentialist approach where you take a claim and then you see if the evidence goes to that, and you build up your case. So yeah. it seemed like God, forensic faith would be first because if Christianity were to say, just take this on blind faith, which it doesn't, then exactly. there's no point in trying to prove it. So he establishes that Christianity says, hey, test the truth claims of this, um, of Christ and so on, which Christ, I think, said to do as well. Yeah. Or he at least proved his truth claims that he is God by resurrecting, doing miracles and so on. So he, he, was, a, he was the apologist. And then you go from there, it's just like, okay, let's test Christianity. First off, I it, it, the the first major truth claim is God exists. So the, I, it would seem like God's crime scene would be the next book. And then since you since I think he establishes some he he goes through the main arguments and so on, and I think he gives good arguments. And since that's since that's you know the case, then cool case Christianity would go over the reliability of the New Testament and show that Christianity is reliable as yeah. a source as well. Well, I mean, there's there's also the uh, fact that you know when 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 Jesus w was was proving uh, himself to be divine, uh, he was not trying to convince atheists. <laughs> there were there weren't really a, a whole lot of atheists in, in first century Judea, you know. Yeah, the first atheist. Um, oh, I did a paper on this along, like beginning of my semester. But the first atheist, I don't remember his name, but. The atheist was not the same word. It was basically for denying um, polytheism, going to deism, and that yeah. was in fifth century uh, Greece or something like that. And yeah. he was—I'm pretty sure he was martyred, I guess, for his beliefs of that the gods are not personal, which was the first form of form of atheism, but not really atheism in, in that sense. Yeah, it, not even the lack of belief thing, because you're not lacking a belief. You're just simply saying, "I don't think the gods are personal." You still believe in the polytheistic gods you're just saying that they're not personal which just like okay well I, i'm i'm not next i'm not an expert in that but but yeah uh i think i think the most ridiculous uh complaint atheists have about the bible is that it doesn't prove god it's like well, it doesn't it's not supposed if, to, if it's true it's the true claim of god is not trying to convince atheists uh it was setting out a doctrine so i i mean that doesn't mean that we can't we can't you know, use other other means to uh, establish its truth, but it's like before you before you can engage in a defense of the doctrine, you first need a doctrine to defend. So that that is what the Bible is. Yeah. Well, and, and then of course they're going to their whole um, drone attack of oh, you're you're indoctrinated, but it's just like yeah, I believe in certain teachings, like like how you hold to the doctrine that you exist, which would just be a presupposition yeah. in, in that case. Because it's something you can't prove or disprove. You can be so skeptical about it, 
or you you don't you you yourself do not believe that you exist. But if you don't believe you exist, and that truth claim doesn't exist in the first place. So. Well, yeah, but I I mean the thing is if if you if you uh, uh if you hold yourself to a, to a rational evidence based worldview, then when you say oh uh all people who are religious only believe because they are indoctrinated, you are leaving yourself wide open for attack. That's yeah. what I'm <laughs> Okay, you're talking about that me personally. Tell, please tell me everything you know about me. Uh, <laughs> offer your proof that the only reason I believe I love their their little uh, uh, pseudo psychology and pseudo sociology. It's just because you're afraid of death. It's because you're afraid of being. <laughs> it's like okay, prove that. <laughs> just prove well, anything that you're uh, saying. Uh, I would just use John Lennox's. Um, I I posted a meme on Instagram of. Stephen Hawking says that, and then John Lennox, John Lennox replies, "Oh, you're just afraid of the light. You're just afraid of the truth." Yeah, except it, Ray. And it's just like it's it's a non-argument, of course. Yeah. Now, Peter Peter Atkins tried to argue that. Um, now I don't remember what his first argument was, but it was a fallacious argument, and William Lane Craig pointed that out. And then he said, "Well, most religious people are just afraid of death, so that's why belief in God is common." Yeah. So then he said. These two arguments put together is my main argument. And then when like, Craig just replied, well, two fl two unsound, un invalid, fallacious arguments don't make a sound argument. Which yes, that was great. Yeah. That was great. I, I mean, what, that oh, you saw that debate? No, I, that that's that's a great comment, though. Yeah. Yes. Well, it, no, it's like two two bad arguments put together does not make one good argument. Yes. Well, that comes. From that's, I mean, that to me, I mean, that overall is is because. So few atheists actually try to prove anything they say. They all they do is assertion. So I really think it's time for Christians to start holding their feet to the fire. And 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 I think that should always, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I'm not saying that everyone has to do it the way I do it, but I, that should that should be the first thing you throw in, throw in their face. Prove what you just said. Yeah, I, I I don't buy. It. Oh, go go ahead. You're. No, it, it's it's whether it, whether it's their, it's their claims about psychology. You'll notice they they for all their for all their good words about about physics and and you know uh, uh, geology and biology, uh, they never actually draw from these disciplines <laughs> in making in making their arguments. They 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 have these uh, kind of pains to the hard sciences, but they never actually use them. What they do use to argue against Christianity. Is is this kind of bullshit dime store psychology and bullshit dime store sociology, where they say you only believe because you that's what you were indoctrinated by your parents, or you only believe because uh, uh, you're afraid of death or whatever. And so that, I, in my opinion, there's no need to get fancy. That's that should be the first line of, of offense, rather. Just say prove what you just said. Yeah, well, uh, I think that's in First yeah. Peter fifteen and Elder Verses, and I, I like your videos. I I don't think you're that hot. You 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 don't seem hostile. I think Max, however, um, I, I think he's a bit over the top sometimes. And we, <laughs> we, we 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 we've had that conversation too when I, when I did my first podcast with him on his. Yeah. Uh, I I quoted First Peter three fifteen, and he just responded, "Well, don't cast your pearls before the swine." But it's just like that's exactly what you're doing. You're going beyond the people that you don't like, and you're casting your pearls, pearls towards them. You're wasting your time, and I think that's out of context as well. Um, now I did watch a non sequitur show where, um, they had Shannon Q and Godless Engineer and Max, and they were it was like the after show, and they they went over the top. They they attacked his child, I, I believe, and used yeah. You, yeah. Well, it's it's like if the show is so unbiased, why why do they have the atheist clown car? You know, uh, yeah. why, why are all these uh, atheists kind of uh, uh, dogpiling uh, the one Christian? And uh, see, I, I have complaints uh, with the with uh, the guy who runs the non sequitur show that I haven't I haven't made public, but as you know, I mean, I, I have I have my problems. But look look at the uh, look at the comments uh, that he loves uh, in the comment section. Do do those uh do those betray a man who is unbiased when a person says uh, uh, uh we're going to destroy Christianity here? They they they, they make Kyle, it. Clear. Kyle gives that a love. Is is that the action of a man who is unbiased who is an unbiased moderator? Well, I I think they make that clear, and I think they're at least honest with themselves that they are fairly biased. I 
And they the, the debates they 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 ask good questions and they they try and say as non biased as possible, which is which is fine. I I think we all have our biases at the end of the day. Of course, I think there there's a wrong and false. Of course, yeah. But um, I I do think Max's comment if he did. If Shannon Q did not take him out of context, if if he did compare her to a Nazi and, and KKK member, I, I think that's over the top as well. <laughs> she she <laughs> doesn't seem like that. a bad I person, that, so I don't want to comment on that. Yeah, yeah, I, I again, I, I disagree with his approach. I agree, I agree with the, the premise of a red pill religion, but at the same time, I think their approach is unbiblical. And well. I, 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 I don't think when you appeal to the same standards that you don't like, which is obviously new atheism, hostile, you're you're not accomplishing your goal, I think. Yeah. And I, I think that that's the biggest flaw in apologetics is well, not apologetics when you misapply apologetics and only read half of first Peter three fifteen and so on. I, I, I will say, uh uh in my opinion, and and uh I think I, I, I think what kind of drew uh, Max and I towards each other uh, was that we both shared a sense of urgency that I don't think many Christians have. Oh, I, I agree with your guys' uh, urgency. Yeah. And, and, and so uh, I, and I agree with him that uh, just taking the view that, that words have consequences. And we yeah. don't have to look very far around the world to see, you know, Canada – is is you know enacting legislation that that parents who who teach uh, kids a biblical view of sexuality uh, uh, can be they can be taken taken from them by child so, social services yeah. they snowball very quickly and so I mean I mean we cannot take uh you know it's, oh well I'm just these are just innocent words and then they say you know oh well you know all Christians are standing in a way of of, of scientific and technological progress those are not innocent words because oh, i i agree you call people that has been used by atheist regimes to justify the slaughter of, of religious beliefs and clerics yeah. so yeah. i mean i mean that's the thing words and ideas have consequences i i, I agree i think he's right to to treat them that way um or well, how uh, now this is coming from a very christian perspective I'm pretty sure Christ would view God himself would be all of us as sinful. And it seems like to me he's treated us not according to our own standards, but according to his go godly standards. And I think he's forgiven all, ex extends grace to people who are sinners and are, are essentially pieces of cr garbage in some degree. I, I think everyone <laughs> ha ha has their personal um, sin nature, which I, by, by yourself, I don't think you can be... a no, well, I'm not going to say not a good person. It's not, it's not that somebody is 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 is, is you know committing a, a sin of commission, and we are standing there in judgment of them. I mean, I mean that I mean we we are taking ideas seriously. That could I, I I agree. Like abortion, I'm complete. Obviously, I'm completely against that, and I I I don't take it from the perspective that um. Uh, I I don't well, when I have these conversations on abortion I'm, I I don't take the same approach as Max would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you're you're not going to get anywhere, and and that's just my opinion at the end of the day. And I I, I think there's from experience that my, I think my approach works a little better. But yeah, uh, uh, I like on on my personal Facebook. Uh, it's that's not I twenty years ago, twenty years ago to fifteen years ago. That was my whole thing. I, I debated abortion day in, day out. And uh, what, what happened was, even though I don't talk about abortion, I think uh, it gave me a whole education uh, in how people think and how to persuade people and how arguments work and how the internet works. And so, I, I mean, it was valuable uh, insofar as that. Nowadays, when when i see people say things uh people people i know personally that's the thing is that like i have no, i have no problem being friends with an atheist the thing is not none of them want to be friends with me okay so i i, I don't hold myself to blame there but uh i do have uh many friends who who, who are who are pro-choice or, or pro-abortion or whatever and so when they say when they say things i i know i could respond to it but i'm like this is just 
this is gonna put out more more uh uh you know this is gonna put out more heat than light nobody's mind is going to be changed it's going to result in a bunch of bad feelings and the thing is is, is that this kind of uh, uh the whole uh pro-choice kind of mentality is kind of or it's kind of already here it's already the status quo so i'm more concerned with fighting things that that are kind of emergent that are kind that are kind of on the come up and so that's why i think it's it's more valuable to kind of uh take take the new atheist movement and kind of snip it in the bud before it kind of enjoys that status quo status that that uh you know the pro-choice movement does well, well I, I, I think exam, examining uh, uh, pro-choice arguments uh, can be very educational in 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 uh, uh, yeah dealing with dealing with a, deal with, a more, uh, I mean, deal with religion and other topics. I'm kind of, I'm kind of running out of gas here, but like one of the things uh, that always struck me in the beginning about about abortion is that when when you uh, uh, you know, say something against abortion, and you say that to a pro-choicer. They immediately, they immediately, they take Alinsky tactics. You know, the the Alinsky rules for radicals. I, I put that together much later. They take Alinsky tactics and they throw it back on you. They say you just want to control women's bodies. They are projecting a, a psychology onto you. They are using a, a kind of bulverism to explain away your motivations. I, I realize now that has become a template for atheism, it's become a template for the left as a whole. Because the left as a whole seems to have lost the ability to, seems to have lost even the concept of persuasion. They don't see you as, as a rational actor who can, be, who can be persuaded otherwise. You just need to be beaten into submission. Um, I, I apologize if this is getting more into politics than you'd like. But yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm very big. I'm... Now, I wouldn't say I'm like secular. I, I do think in some degree, if Christianity is true, then obviously I think it should be involved in politics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you, you're holding that God does exist, and I think we should go by his standards. Since What what I will never say is that a uh, 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 Christian who is pro-choice is not really a Christian. I would never say that. Well, I, I, I think they realize that abortion is wrong, but I think they're misinformed about – because you usually – most people who are pro-choice aren't like, oh, I want to murder this baby and so on. They, yeah. they go, I, I, I do agree that abortion is wrong, but at the same time, I think that the woman who, who's going through it more it has more value and so on. Now, I think that's a poor argument, especially for the reasons for the most common reasons are not for rape or the mother is going to die. That's like under under point one percent of all cases yeah. of abortion. It's usually either I wasn't thinking I can't afford a baby right now. And if you can't afford it, then why are you doing these certain activities and bad marriages and so on? I, I, I think it's just end, end up being a series of bad choices. Well, I, I mean, I mean, the, the fundamental, uh, uh, I don't even want to say irony, but, but <laughs> I actually want, I actually want to get off this, this topic of, yeah, yeah, we, we can. but, but they, they call themselves pro-choice. It should be a woman's choice. But when it comes to make an emotional, uh, appeal for abortion, it, it is always the woman who is in, in a very compromised situation. It's always the woman who doesn't have the money to raise a child, you know? And so they, they, they put forward the thing where it would seem that like the woman doesn't have a choice. Even though they call themselves pro-choice, so I—I I mean that—that that seems like the fundamental uh, kind of irony of their position. Well, yeah. I—if you're a feminist, then you—you—you you, you should be very anti-abortion. Well, I, I'm pretty sure they're proven to be very harmful to certain women and so yeah. on. But at the same time, what about the women who are in your stomach and so on? Yeah, do they don't have the same fundamental rights as you do. And, and and there are there are women who who are doing very good work uh, and who call themselves feminists for life, which I, which is why I really can't hop on the whole uh, feminist bashing thing either, because yeah, there there are women who identify as feminists and they're they're pro life, and so I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bash them for that, but you know, ult ultimately uh, nowadays uh, my my concerns are with with the the poison of of atheism or new atheism rather well yeah it entails the implications of our godless world i think women like craig displays the absurdity of life without god 
Yeah, yeah. And really, what Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, and all of them did was not really wrong on their view. No, you know, even though they even though they don't admit that atheism has its bad cases as well. Well, a lot more bad cases than Christianity as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's very it's very concerning how how kind of flippant uh, atheists are uh, about their own history and how how, how you know how kind of glibly they kind of whitewash their own history. It's like, well, it's like, oh, well, you know, Stalin had a beard. So you're going to accuse all people with beards of, you know, and I was like, that's not my argument. Yeah, no. that, like they just immediately go stupid in, in a very scripted way. It's like, no, uh, Stalin said that atheism was a necessary part of, 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 of communism. Yeah, he yeah. said exactly the same lines as atheists say nowadays, Religion is standing in the way of technological and scientific progress. So as it happens, if you can't eliminate the ideas, and he did everything, he had all these re-education uh, camps set up to re-educate. That didn't work. If you can't eliminate the ideas, you eliminate the believers. And I mean, that's the way it worked. Stalin was motivated by the same motivations that motivate current modern day anti-theists. So I, I think I think it is it is very troubling the way they, they try to uh, sweep that aside. Yeah, it's it's definitely obviously special pleading because it's just like all the crusades and it's just like, oh, what about the hundreds of millions? Well, I don't know the exact numbers, but millions that have been killed in the name of the so-called progress of yeah. science itself, which yeah. obviously I'm a science enthusiast. I, a atheism, of course, the progress of a godless society and so on. Is a ideal, per, uh, ideal type of society from the perspective of the of the communists and so on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, what? I mean, I, you could do it, or I could do it, or someone. I mean, someone needs to tackle. And you said a, a special pleading. The the uh, the famous quotation that you know, uh, w without without religion, uh, bad people do bad things, and good people do good things. Uh, it's only with religion that good people can do bad things. Let's let's poke he holes in the atrocious critical thinking that would would produce a comment like that, you know. And that came from a physicist. Uh, I I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but it was a Brian physicist. Krauss. <clears throat> What's that? Ry Lawrence Krauss. No, no, no. It, it was older. This is like something some guy said back in the eighties. But uh, uh, Victor Stinger. No, I, I mean, I mean, it, go, it goes back further than that. I'm losing my voice here, but yeah, uh, have you ever heard that before? Yeah, I that that is a new atheist line too, as well. Yeah, and that's sort of Christopher Hitchens' thing, which is the only new atheist who had any sort of charm. But of, of course, because he 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 was their spokesperson basically. But basically, in his book, God is not God is not great. I haven't read it, but I've watched his arguments and so on. His main arguments. And of course, he just attacks the God of the Bible. Which, yeah. Like, if you don't think he exists, and why? But then, then, then they're just argue well. Christians are the dominant society or view in society as well. But oh, it, by just, the way, I have the quotation here. It's from it's from Stephen Weinberg. Who, who? Oh, okay, yeah. Which means that that I mean, just because someone's a physicist, just because someone's very accomplished in physics, it does not mean that they are capable of forming a logical argument. Unfortunately. Uh, but Steven Weinberg said, with or without religion, good people can behave well and bad people can do evil. But for good people to do evil, that takes religion. Okay, that is uh, – well, I, I agree. Oh, spade a spade. That is an idiotic comment. Yeah. And the other one I like is that is that science flies you to the moon, religion flies you into a building. Yeah. They're so stupid. And, and so yeah, – And of course they equivocate religion there. They meet all religions and then they want to try and include Christianity yeah. and there even no Christianity. Has not flown any. What what I love is that uh, uh, <laughs> that's not the only time a person has ever tried to fly a plane into a building. Uh, in 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 Dallas, Texas, uh, about ten years ago, a man a man who had uh, uh, grievances with the IRS tried to fly a plane into the building. No, I mean I, it was before. Yeah, it was about ten years ago. Back in the nineties, uh, uh, you you were I, you weren't even born then. I don't think. Uh, a guy tried to uh, fly a plane into the White House. He had a little private plane, and, and it crashed on the White House lawn when, when Bill Clinton was president. So, I mean, people, that's not the only time a person tried to fly a plane into a building. And in those other instances, they were guided by, by secular motivations. 
Now, the man who tried to fly the plane into the IRS building in Texas, uh, I can't say that he was an atheist, although he did post very anti-Catholic things to the internet. So he was anti-Catholic. So, I mean, again, he has... So he, he could have been a very extreme reformer who thinks yeah. that the 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 um, antichrist and so on is the catholic church which is ridiculous i think well then, then i mean he would be very a very good christian if he's trying to kill people no no i i don't know your feelings on pope francis but i i don't like pope francis that's, that's my opinion but well i mean i mean that's the thing it's like oh people will be killed in the name of religion actually actually christians have this rule that says thou shalt not kill so if anybody kills well, of Christianity. Well, I, I have to stop here. Thou shalt not murder because there is that distinction. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But they they are they are killing uh, in spite of their religion, not because of their. Religion. Yeah, and um, do you know who the friendly atheist is? Of uh, yes, Hermit yeah. Metma or whatever. Yeah, the the Texas shooting that happened last year, he he commented um when when he heard apparently he was just like oh apparently this guy was an atheist you know I don't find that convincing. Even though it's proven he has Facebook yeah. posts saying that he's an atheist and he hates religion and so on. That's why he shot up that church. 26 yeah. people dead. Jeez. It's more special pleading for atheists. But and then, and, then, and then he made some very flippant comments, of course. They asked him about how prayer doesn't stop bullets or something. I mean, yeah, that was Neil deGrasse Tyson. That was in your video. Well, no, a lot of them. And, and Will Wheaton, you know, Will Wheaton uh, said that too. It's, it's really disgusting, you know. I really, I really do hope uh, people see these people for what they are. You know, yeah. It's it, it, it's 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 kind of disappointing to me that it's not just immediately obvious to everyone that these are terrible, terrible people. But I, I think hopefully more people are realizing that these are these are disgusting people. Yes, there there, there are there obviously are good atheists. The moral argument has never said you need religion to be good. No. Now the question is. Do do we need God as the ontological source for all oh, goodness? I think you do. And what when people say, "Oh, if if uh, God didn't exist, would you still do these things?" And that just begs the question. It's not proving whether you need God or not for morality. Well, for objective morality. Yeah, well, to perform the tasks, obviously. Yeah. You don't, you don't need God to perform the tasks, but but to have a an ontological grounding for morality. Uh, uh, yes, and that does not necessarily mean. Uh, and they they try to confuse the issue. It says, well, the the a holy text you know has certain has certain uh, uh, you know instructions. It's not whether or not uh, we should obey uh, the certain given these certain given prohibitions in a in a holy text. That's a separate question of whether of you know whether morals have a grounding in 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 God. Yeah. Now here here's a question for you. Um, how do you think one obtains salvation? Through uh, works or faith? Uh, well, <laughs> isn't is that the eternal question? Uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't think it, it is. It is solely through works or solely through faith. Yeah, I, I think faith is a grace act of work because you choose to trust in the ultimate source of good. Yes, yeah, and that that will produce the good works. But of course, I, I, I do hold faith through grace alone. It's, yeah. You know, for salvation. Well, I mean, there, there's a whole question with, without works. I mean, I mean, you're not. You're well, not without dead. without faith, yeah, yeah. without yes. works, faith is dead, and without yeah. uh, works or without works with faith, then that's dead as well. And I think James makes that distinction. I think that's all throughout the New Testament. Yeah. Well, I, I plan on doing the video of, on how I think faith comes first, and of course, I don't think that. I, I think one can choose to have faith or not. Because faith is just trust, and that presupposes free will. Yeah, yeah. And of course, my reformer uh, brethren, I would disagree with on how one obtains faith, because they argue God ha God has to regenerate you, and that He gives you faith. Which, just like, why won't He do that with everyone? I hold to the view that God is all loving, and so on. Yeah. Uh, something I wanted to do when I was hoping to like maybe recruit someone else is that I I always hear uh, atheists. Uh, very uh, bristling at the suggestion, you know. Taken at, at to take a, a famous example it is Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, who did these horrible, horrible, horrible things. And then supposedly, uh, if if you believe him, he he, he found he found Christ uh, when he was in jail, and then and then he got murdered. So the question is, is Jeffrey Dahmer in heaven? And so, uh, of course, naturally, I would make the case that if we take the if we 
you know, take him at face value that he was safe. Obviously, he is going to be in heaven. Uh, yeah. But atheists have a lot of problems with that. Well, uh, yeah, it, they I mean, can't. It's reasonable them. to have problems, but I think it's it's time somebody addressed that particular question, you know? Yeah. Now, I, I think their objection would be like, oh, he did all that. Will he not get punishment? I, I think he got his punishment on Earth for earthly crimes. So yeah. I think God can grant him everlasting life. Well, but yeah, well, they, they would hold him in contrast to the to the atheist who is always a good citizen well, yeah. life and never did wrong to anyone who and who is unsaved. And I said, well, that's not fair yeah. that Jeffrey Dahmer, who did all these horrible things, gets to go to heaven. And so uh, obviously, I mean, I, I don't take an or, unorthodox view there, but I, I do think it, it's it's an emotional argument that that needs to be addressed. Well, I, I think, again, if faith is the greatest act of work because you choose to trust in the ultimate source of good, and if you deny that ultimate source of good, which is God, and yeah. essentially Christ, now I think that's the worst thing that one could do because you've yes. chosen to deny the ultimate source of good. Yes. And that, that's what hell is, you, yeah. separation from God and as of your own free will. And if you choose to do that knowing the consequences, then at the end of the day, you have to either show that Christianity is false or you are denying something that is very evident. And I, I yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of like the it's kind of like the argument from evil is that is that you can you, you can't miss the emotional force of the argument. So oh, that, if, that, that's if a person does not already subscribe to the precepts of Christianity, that could be a tough pill for them to swallow. Yeah, yeah, you know. And the problem with evil is a sincere question. Uh, yeah. I think it, I think in its logical form, if one was to take it more philosophically, I, I don't think it's the best argument for atheism. So and I, I think there's better arguments. But at the, at the same time, from an emotional standpoint, it's very hard to answer. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you can't uh, bring syllogisms into this in, in many cases, I think. And that's I, I think I think a lot of Christian apologists are, are much too breezy about that. They say, "Oh, well, there's no logical reason to think." Yeah, that. And, and and no, well, okay, that's not you're not really addressing the 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 nut of the issue, which which is emotion and very real. I mean, just because just because you know, for me, I I see the beauty of the world and that that God's existence is undeniable. Just because I'm so I'm so overwhelmed by the beauty of the world. And so an atheist can look at the world and by the same token see all the suffering and say, well, God can't exist. And neither of those arguments are objectively right. Neither of them are objectively wrong. Well, there, I, I think it's there, there are maybe a non-argument because it's an argument from emotion, essentially. But um, it, it, I, from the emotional standpoint, I'll just go with the worldview since we're not really going based on logic here. We're just going on yeah. what, what satisfies my emotions the best. Christianity offers hopes offers hope loving in god who if he is real he offers salvation so that if you do die in in, in the sense that um you you die on earth then you have hope in the afterlife and the evil is ultimately meaningless because the overall good will be god and so on mm. and then if you choose to subscribe to atheism which literally says there basically is no objective evil or good which most of them, the the most consistent, will admit that that there are no such thing, no such things as object moral value. Oh, they just lack a belief. They just lack a belief. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, of course you get get into that garbage bomb. At the same time, it, you, you, I I would just be well on value. Uh, I've done. I I haven't done the math myself, but one of my professors have that if you take our material fundamental material parts, we're just worth thirty dollars. So, <laughs> like, oh. Well, secular humanism, materialism definitely values me as a material being just thirty dollars. I don't know how where they get value from. If you do have a soul that's made in the image of God, who's the greatest conceivable being, also you have much value. Yes, he has chosen to create you in in a special way. Yes, I I, I mean I mean I, I agree that 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 is that is a source of of hope, and it, it is a it is a source of of, of self worth. I think it is a it is a source of self worth, far more far more uh, uh, authentic than the kind of uh, tinny uh, reassurances of new atheism that if that if you recite the proper uh, invisible sky fairy memes, then that makes you a, a part of the intellectual elite. 
Yeah, and of course, when people do that, they don't understand. Of course, I don't believe in that God either. I mean, yeah, that's that's so like, oh, you're lacking belief in God, but it's like if God, by definition, is the greatest conceivable being, then I don't lack a belief in God. Well, I mean, I've been down that, I've been down that road many times. They're like, yeah, you do. That's their response. Yeah, you do. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, well, okay. for, for, first off, the argument in its form is invalid and unsound. Commits the fallacy of equivocation about how, however man, 3,000, a million, however they want to say oh, yeah. it, they equivocate God. If you mean by God of the transcendent, transcendent creator who is timeless spaces and material and all that good stuff, then yeah, I believe in that God. I don't like belief. Yeah. But there, if you, yeah, I mean, if there, you there say... So, there's so many problems with that. We could we could go all night about that. Well, e even if I grant that, what, what does that mean? Uh, there, yeah. There's no conclusion. It's just like, okay, I, I guess I believe in one God more than you, but it doesn't make me either less rational or more rational because... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it, it's a complete non-argument. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love your video, uh, R Ricky Garvey's versus the three thousand. Just like, you know, what do you mean? Did a great video response where uh he he basically argued. So the argument essentially is you know one less detail. So he he gives the examples of oh a triangle is just a square with one less side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, I, yeah. Uh, and then one is oh. You're a murderer too. You just murdered one less person than I did. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, no, it, it's the whole thing is like uh, uh, you you are an atheist for every other god. It's like that's that's like saying that you're you're a, a you know a married man is a bachelor for every other woman or something. You know, <laughs> it's, it's completely ridiculous. Yeah, or, or, or you know, an anarchist. You know, I'm an anarchist for every for every other political system. It's it's it's. Yeah, it's just, just say why are why are you talking in this weird way? That's another thing Christians need to need to do. Which is like, why are you why are you talking in this very weird way? Uh, uh, this is not the way people normally talk. People don't normally say they lack a belief in things. You know, I you I know, lack a belief in our justice ethic. system. Yeah. Oh, I, th I, th I think we should we should wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, essentially our our main premise of this whole podcast is, is Christians need apologetics to show the major flaws of new atheism and so on. Yes. Yes. And uh, maybe maybe I didn't choose all my words perfectly. So but, you, why, why don't you tell everyone about your new T-shirts? Yes. Well, well, uh, uh, I, I designed a logo for, for, uh, deflating atheism and I, I'm, I hate to toot my, I'm quite proud of it. Actually. I think it came out much better than I expected. So I have a cafe press site. I believe the URL is just cafepress.com slash deflating atheism, uh, where I'm selling, uh, uh, one variation on this logo and it's not my ideal thing is doing on Cafe Press, but you, you get a full color logo and it has the Cosmos and the Deflating Atheism logo. And I hope uh, later to get a, 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 a Teespring, uh, to get my Teespring account up and working so you could get these logos in, in, in spot color and uh, just get just, you know, the, the screen printed screen printing uh, that Teespring does. And so, uh, yeah, so uh, I have swag now. And so I, the ones like Cafe Press, I have T-shirts, I have stickers, I have uh, uh, coffee mugs, and I think that I think they look uh, pretty pretty good. So yeah, I I, I left a link in the description. I made by a coffee mug, but um, I I didn't know you had a website. So um, what what what's your website on? I what deflating atheism? No, I don't have a deflating atheism website. I just, well, have, what, I just have a YouTube page. Well, what what's your uh, coffee press website? Oh, the Cafe Press? Yeah, uh, just cafepress.com slash deflating atheism. And I'll, I, I, can, I can message you that later. Okay. Uh, I not, could. To, not to toot my own horn, but when you see the logo, uh, look at the way the A's line up. You could see, you could see my OCD at work. So, uh, uh, yes. It, it, took, it, took a little, it took a little, uh, took a little algebra trigonometry to, to make my logo end up that way. So. I'd like, I'd like to see. I like to see a, a self-proclaimed rational atheist uh, uh, calcu calculate an art cosecant in, in designing their logo. Oh, I, I couldn't <laughs> do that. I, I used to be into trig and stuff like that, but then I got into philosophy, which is a, a bit different. Yeah. Um, I when I, I I wanted to be an engineer originally, but 
I realize I math, mathematics is basically based on logical inference and so on, but I, I don't work well with numbers. I work well with statements that can be true or false. Yeah, propositions, yes. Yeah, yeah, which which is why I think this is a good field for me and so on. Yes, yes. And it, it's half my degree. I'm also a biblical studies major. So, yeah, um, if you send me that, I could put that on my website as well. Sure thing. Yeah. I, thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, and uh, do you think Christian truth should be spread through apologetics? No, no. <laughs> yes, I do. I oh. do. But, oh. but, uh, I don't think arguments are, are the are the only are the only means of persuasion, or or even or is even is even ten percent of the battle that we need to fight. Arguments are great, but they're they're not they're not all we need to do. As Nabil Koresha would say, arguments are for getting rid of this uh, blocking stones that are keeping you from coming to Christ and so on. So there that's, you. I'll agree with you. But at least every Christian should be able to answer, what do you believe and why do you believe it? Yes. yes. I think if every Christian could do that, then their new, new atheism would not have its effect. Yes, and, and and I also think that preemptive apologetics is is more 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 important than curative uh, uh, apologetics, as as they say, an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So if if a person can know the reasons for their belief, they will they will never be lured into atheism in the first place. Because like I said, once they get into atheism and once it gets its claws into them, it's very hard to extricate them because their entire identity is based on atheism. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, I left the link in the description to your Facebook page, YouTube page. So everyone should subscribe, even though most probably are already. And um, I also left the link to the T-shirts. Oh, yeah. So are you going are you going to eventually put atheist memes on there or atheist slogans? On the oh, back? no, that, that's going to be my that's going to be my Teespring. Uh, that's going to be up because uh. When when you do the when you do the back printing on the cafe press, that costs four bucks more, and it and the shirts are already pretty expensive as they are. So yeah, when, when I do the Teespring one, uh, they're going to have slogans on the back, and I I, I prefer to keep them secret, but uh, they are very triggering. They are very triggering for atheists. My like, first one, we don't have to mention what it is, but are you considering that one? Uh yeah, I, I had one, I had one, and and uh, I'll, I'll have others, and and. Hopefully, when I get that up and running, uh, uh, you all can see that. Yes, and and you you'll just feel like a badass just walking around, and <laughs> triggering all the atheists because then they will be flailing their fists at you. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, great great podcast. Uh, this was the fourth one that we've done with each other. We've been on a couple other ones together, but on focus of either my channel or your channel on yeah. religion. But um, yeah. So go subscribe to him and so on. Leave a like. Uh, share and subscribe and Christian truth should be spread through apologetics. That's the purpose of my website and podcast and God bless.